Hello everyone, I wanted to do a quick performance test of NVIDIA's preview version of Isaac Gym. It's a package that was uh, released uh, around uh, last fall. So it's about doing reinforcement learning for robotics directly on the GPU. This is awesome because it will enable much better performance on uh, much cheaper hardware. So if you watch my uh, previous video about NVIDIA Cooley that runs Atari environments directly on the GPU, it's the same principle. So to download the package, uh, you go to uh, developer NVIDIA slash Isaac Jim. I put the link in the description down below. Uh, you join. And once you join, you you're going to be able to download the uh, uh, TAR version. So basically, you get this and then you extract it. And all you have to do is uh, is go to the Python folder and install like any other package of uh, this command. It's quite easy. It uses PyTorch 1.7, so all you need to have is your NVIDIA drivers up to date. My driver version is 460. So in the docs, they list uh, various reinforcement learning examples that you can try. So there's the obvious Carpole, Spider, Humanids examples, but we're gonna try the Shadow Hand example. This is based on the OpenAI experiment. So in NVIDIA's blog post, they talk about OpenAI's hand manipulation uh, demo, which is the Shadow N example. So they claim that OpenAI used a cluster of uh, 284 systems with over 6,000 CPU cores and eight Volta uh, GPUs. So basically it was uh, 30 hours of training to get the best results. So why is that? Because it's it's pretty heavy intensive uh, physics and uh, also lots of uh, ML in that. So they include an example of that, but that can run on a single uh, 800 GPU in around 10 hours. So we're going to try that. We don't have an 800 GPU, so I'm going to try it on my RTX 2060 Super. And I'm going to try it on a much cheaper mining hardware on a P106. Hundred. So first, let's check our CPU. We have a E5 2678 V3. It's an older Xeon, but it's still uh, very strong. And as I said, we have an RTX 2060 Super with uh, eight gigabyte of RAM. So we're gonna try the first the first experiment. We're gonna try it on the um, on the CPU. And uh, if you try it yourself, you should not forget to to set the num number of threads you want because by default it's four. So it takes a while to start. So as you can see, we get a little bit over 4,000 steps per second in terms of performance. And you can see here that the GPU is underutilized and the CPU is uh, heavily utilized. So before we run the version directly on the GPU, I just want to explain the parameters that we used if you want to try it yourself. So as I said, the non threads is for a number of um, of threads you want to the a number of jobs you want to use in parallel if you want to run on this on the cpu you need to specify device cpu and also ppo device cpu because otherwise you will run the reward calculations directly on the gpu and specify the the physics flag too and headless is um, if you don't want to see the visualization we're going to try it without headless later so let's try it directly on the on the gpu so basically, we can remove all this.
So as you can see, we have much better performance. Before it was between 4,000 to 5,000. Now it's um, slightly over 30,000. Uh, this is a six time uh, performance boost. It's quite a lot. And you can see the DA is much more reasonable now. So if you want to see the visualization, you can try it. We just remove headless. So as you can see, it runs many environments at the same time. And as you can easily imagine, it's very uh, computation intensive. So running on the GPU definitely helps. So next, you might think that an RTX 2060 Super is not exactly cheap hardware. So you're right, especially with the current GPU prices. So we're gonna try it on the much cheaper hardware. So first, uh, let's check the hardware. So we got the Celeron uh, CPU. G1830 with only two cores and two threads. This CPU cost me about uh, five five bucks. And um, to put that in perspective, the Cinebench R15 benchmark score is about I think it's under 200. Uh, the older Xeon I showed you before is uh, around 1,700. So this CPU is quite weak. It's a typical CPU you find on my hardware. So next we have a P106 with um, P106 with 6 GB of VRAM. Normally you can find this GPU for under 100 USD, but with the current environment, I think you it's more much closer to 200 USD. But typically it's cheap, and it's the cheapest 6 GB plus a GPU we can find from NVIDIA, I think. And it's uh, enough to run the shadow end example. So I already started uh, that example on the CPU because it takes a while to start. So as you can see, we have barely over 500 steps second, which is very low. And you can see the, the CPU utilization is uh, maxed out. Of course, now we're, we're using remote uh, we're using VNC so it takes a bit of CPU but the performance around the same still and you can see GPU is al also underutilized now let's run with the with, with the simulation on the GPU and the reward calculation as well like this So as you can see, we have around 19,000 steps second of performance. And compared to the 500 steps second, the performance gain is quite huge. This total, the total cost of the, the hardware is around 150 USD. So in terms of performance price, I think it's quite good. If we check the CPU usage, it's also quite high because just monitoring and controlling that simulation on the GPU uh, for some reason takes takes some CPU power also. Uh, so 
this CPU is actually too cheap to support many uh, GPUs at the same time, maybe maximum two. So a couple of points. First, you might think that the difference between the P106 and the RTX 2060 Super is not that great. So one of the reasons might be because of, um, of the number environments by default. I think we can increase it for the RTX. I haven't tried it, but I'm pretty sure we could get better performance out of the RTX. And there's other parameters as well we can try. So the other point, you might be wondering how to create your own experiment because that's the whole point of it. So this is a preview version and uh, they explained that they're going to switch. Uh, they're going to switch to how you, you describe the scene. So they say, if I understand correctly, they say they're going to switch to Pixar's scene description language, describe the environment. So th this means that might be not worth it to spend too much time trying to make this work for your own experiment but trying maybe it's better to try to modify the current examples and wait for their framework to be more mature that's what we're going to do so in the meantime you can uh, you can start by checking the shadow n python example in the task folder so here it gives you a pretty good idea on how to, to set up everything and if you want to set up your own um, and you can create your own asset file and change it here. So in conclusion, even though this is just a preview version, I think it uh, shows huge potential and it's more than useful actually, it's essential because most people don't have access to the compute resource that DeepMind and OpenAI have and other uh, big companies. So this is basically the only way to have decent performance and be able to iterate fast enough to, um, to, to experiment with their own ideas. So I hope that um, NVIDIA continues improving this framework. And also I hope that AMD on the Rockham side does something like that because this is quite a showstopper like if you can't have that level of performance on the amd cards without spending huge amount of resource on cpus um, there won't be much reason to switch to it to amd so this was just a quick performance test as the framework matures i will probably do a more in-depth tutorial and uh, that makes a custom example because I want to use it for my own uh, projects too. So thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. Have a nice day.